Black holes probably don't need an introduction, they are objects that result from stellar collapse. Scientists find black holes very interesting, and the reason is quite obvious. Physicist Julie Vlavacek Lorando from the University de Montreal explains that galaxies are bricks that come together to form the universe's overall picture, and to understand how they form and evolve, we first need to understand how black holes work. In search of answers, astrophysicists have studied dozens of galaxies located within a radius of several billion light years from our Milky Way. In this virtual cosmic journey, they have made many amazing discoveries. One of the most important directions of their search is to find the connection between the masses of black holes and the galaxies in which they reside. However, there is an equally interesting question, how large can black holes actually grow? Supermassive black holes surrounded by massive amounts of gas consume this matter and constantly increase in size. So, is there a limit to their growth? To estimate the size of black holes themselves, a team of researchers analyzed the X-ray spectrum emitted from the swirling streams of hot gas in the accretion disks of black holes, and then compared the numbers with the overall brightness level of surrounding galaxies. According to a fairly popular hypothesis, the larger the galaxy, the larger the black hole at its center can be. However, in practice, things turned out to be not so simple. Black holes were discovered that were much larger than the assumed upper limit. It turned out that about 40% of the black holes studied have a mass of 10 billion or more times that of the sun, exceeding the assumed limit by orders of magnitude. There is an upper limit to their growth, beyond which accretion of matter onto the black hole cannot occur, and the black hole must stop gaining weight. By measuring the active ones and their 95%, we can get an idea of their rotation. Now, why is this important? Because it helps us understand the origin of black holes. If supermassive black holes grow mostly by constantly feeding on material from inside their own galaxy, we would expect them to have very high rotation since the momentum of that material would be more or less aligned. But if, instead, supermassive black holes grow by merging with other black holes, we would expect their rotation to be lower. As we measure the rotation of more black holes in different ways, we can better understand their growth. And since supermassive black holes lie at the center of most galaxies, they also lie at the center of our understanding of how those galaxies formed and evolved over billions of years. In other words, within 48 hours, a star like the Sun will simply disappear in the depths of J2157360 supermassive black holes in the active centers of large galaxies are capable of growing to incredible sizes reaching masses and billions of suns the rate of this growth may vary but the black hole j2157360 is also a record holder with its impressive mass of approximately 20 billion suns it adds another one percent every million years Scientists note that J2157362 also demonstrates record luminosity. The huge masses of material falling into it emit light thousands of times brighter than the entire galaxies surrounding this black hole. If it were located in the center of the Milky Way, the light from the surroundings of the black hole at night would be ten times brighter than our full moon. Such powerful radiation would likely make life on Earth impossible. J2157362 is 40,000 times more massive than the black hole in the center of our galaxy, but it's interesting that in galaxy 50014 plus 81, located more than 12 billion light years away from us, there is a real monster with a mass of about 40 billion suns. There is every reason to believe that this is the case, but only further research will give a precise answer. However, such appetite and rapid growth have made scientists wonder about something else. How do supermassive black holes become so massive? Researchers have two assumptions on this matter. Either these black holes originally appeared very large and then literally attracted a large part of the matter and galaxies around them, or there are serious gaps in our knowledge of how galaxies produce black holes. The answer may also lie in another study, in which scientists studied more than 30,000 galaxies located within a radius of 12 billion light years. They found that the ratio of black hole growth rates to star growth rates accelerated with the growth of the galaxies in which the studied objects were located. In other words, 
black holes and galaxies with more stars were always more voracious. The more general conclusion from these studies is that there is indeed a connection between star formation and black holes, and it is very complex. It will certainly take many more studies to better understand it, but one thing is already clear, without these giants, our universe would look completely different. Astronomers experiment only through observation, as one representative of this profession said, there are no instruments long enough to reach the stars. However, astronomers have the laws of physics at their disposal, which not only explain the properties of known objects, but also predict the existence of as yet unobserved phenomena, such as neutron stars, dark matter, and other cosmic phenomena. Theories have calculated all this, but perhaps one of the most mysterious novelties in the universe, a black hole, has been discovered in this way. This insatiable monster sits at the center of our galaxy, capable of influencing not only the habitability of Earth, but even the existence of our planet itself. A huge number of cosmic phenomena can potentially affect the existence of life, but some are more important due to their unique nature, such as black holes. There are no other objects in the universe that are as effective at converting matter into energy. Nothing in the universe acts like a giant spinning electric battery, capable of ejecting matter at speeds close to that of light for tens of thousands of light years. Black holes can trap nearby matter and then swallow it, often without even chewing. Instead of slowly eroding, matter falls into the black hole and gradually accelerates to enormous speeds, spiraling in hyperspeed loops towards the event horizon. If a black hole rotates, clumps of matter interact with each other, creating tension that is sufficient. The matter is twisted into a hyperspeed loop when a black hole rotates. The clumps of matter interact with each other, creating tension that is sufficient for huge releases of kinetic energy, which is transformed into the movement of atomic and subatomic particles and electromagnetic radiation. These particles are formed before reaching the horizon of particles and therefore can escape back. Let's bring a rough example. Imagine a regular drain in the sink. When the liquid, rotating, approaches the drain, its kinetic energy is partially transformed into sound waves. The water interacts with air molecules, and sound waves move faster than water and therefore move away from the drain. In the case of a black hole, the energy emitted during the accretion process can produce various effects in the surrounding galaxies. The matter absorbed by the black hole occurs episodically, like a cycle of washing machine rotation. The black hole pulses, sometimes it absorbs matter, sometimes it remains at rest. The black hole located at the center of our galaxy is currently in a calm state, but like all black holes, it can be activated from time to time. It is interesting to know if the influence of this black hole on the ability of the solar system to maintain conditions suitable for human life. But first of all, how is the working cycle of a black hole arranged? Astronomers' research has shown that, surprisingly, this is related to the dynamics of stars and the galaxy in the central region where this black hole is located. The same processes that send matter into a black hole in this way, launching its working cycle, also affect the stars filling the galaxy. The energy emitted by the shining black hole at the peak and during the working cycle can, in turn, enrich the stellar population of the galaxy and contribute to new star formation. Astronomers have concluded that if you estimate the amount of light emitted by any galaxy, its color will be intermediate between reddish and bluish. Between these two colors is a transitional region when the system as a whole becomes more red and young blue stars gradually die out. Some astronomers call this period a green valley. The connection between the physical mechanisms common to galaxies in the green valley and the activity of black holes in their centers remains a mystery. This intermediate zone in the evolutionary path of galaxies. Most of them are still in the blue cloud or already in the red star sequence. A stellar system located in the green valley stage undergoes changes. It is known that supermassive black holes can be significant in other situations, such as in galactic clusters or young large galaxies. Perhaps such activity leads galaxies into the Green Valley stage. The same circumstances that cause the galaxy to change may be delivering material to the central black hole. Recently, astronomers discovered that our galaxy is in the Green Valley stage of its evolutionary process. 
This fact means that the supermassive black hole located in the center of our galaxy may have a fast working cycle. This is unexpected because, according to observations, it does not appear active. It is only revealed through the characteristic orbit distortions of stars in the central region of the galaxy, and its mass can be estimated based on this data, which is only 4 million solar masses. Among all places in all galaxies in the universe, humanity has chosen this place for its habitat. However, no one could have known in advance that our galaxy would provide shelter for a voracious black hole. However, there may be a correlation between such objects and the emergence of life. If the Milky Way follows the same laws as the tens of thousands of galaxies we observe, then it should contain a regular, active black hole, even if it is not the largest or most voracious. At any moment, a burst of gravitational activity can be expected. Undoubtedly, the Milky Way and the supermassive black hole at its center are special because intelligent life was born here. But why is our universe adapted to the emergence of life? We must finally overcome the old misconception that we are, in some sense, the center of everything, just as Copernicus once proclaimed that we are not the center of our solar system. We are not the center of the universe either. Moreover, according to modern cosmological models, the universe does not have a center at all. The question of our exceptionalism can be answered within the concept of multiple worlds or realities. For example, if our universe is one of many in a multidimensional space, there is nothing surprising about our existence. We simply exist in the world where one set of conditions prevails. This is also facilitated by the fact that we are like an island with a suitable climate. But what conditions must exist in the universe for life to emerge? Could the influence of a black hole be a factor? Events in the center of the galaxy that could have an impact on us must have occurred in the distant past, perhaps even before our solar system formed about four and a half billion years ago. Therefore, our central monster can only exert a very weak influence on the solar system and similar peripheral areas of our Milky Way galaxy, just like many other galaxies that evolve alongside their central supermassive black holes. Furthermore, it is possible to study how a black hole affects life in the solar system and what role it plays as an indicator of the current evolutionary state of the galaxy. The observed link between supermassive black holes and their galaxies at different stages of their development provides good statistical material for understanding the evolution of individual galaxies. Quasars in the early universe, located in the centers of huge elliptical galaxies, are often found in galactic cluster systems. Currently, the stars in such galaxies are old, and there is little interstellar gas to initiate star-forming mechanisms. Our galaxy still produces stars at a rate of about three solar masses per year, which is very little in terms of the duration of a human life, but over the entire period of human evolution, at least 10 million new stars have been born, which is quite significant for the universe. Giant galaxies in the young universe with blazing quasar cores have in some sense long burned out. Energy outbursts from their central regions hinder the formation of new stars, as well as the cooling of matter to form star systems. However, our galaxy is still moving along its evolutionary path. We live in a large spiral galaxy, and our small black hole at its center may be the most conducive condition for life, as energy was not expended on building a massive black hole and fighting the consequences of its activity. In galaxies similar to ours, new stars continue to form, but with different energy characteristics. Most new stars arise in the branches of spiral arms and shock waves of gas and dust, and stars also form away from the galactic center. According to astronomers, formation of stars greatly pollutes the surrounding space with very active stars and massive stars quickly burning through their nuclear fuel, producing giant supernova explosions. Planetary systems can end up detached or saturated with radiation. Fast-moving high-energy particles and gamma rays can seriously damage a planet's atmosphere. Even the emission of invisible neutrinos produced by the collapse of stars is intense enough to disrupt the biological balance on a planet. In the depths of stars, heavy elements are born and spread everywhere, serving as the birthplace of other stars and planetary systems. 
These planets are made up of a complex chemical mixture of hydrocarbons and water, multilayered and dynamically evolving due to the radioactive isotopes they contain, possessing a billion-year history. In a favorable environment somewhere between the regions of star formation and the explosion of new stars and places of dying and decaying old stars, there are stars similar to our sun, possessing planetary systems. This is far enough from the galactic center, but not too close to areas of active star formation. The connection between the phenomenon of life and the parameters of supermassive black holes is quite simple. In galaxies containing supermassive black holes of moderate size and regular dynamics, moderate and calm regions are more likely to form than in galaxies containing giant supermassive black holes. The fact that there are galaxies similar to the Milky Way on cosmological timescales is strongly related to two opposing processes, the gravitational agglomeration of matter and the release of destructive energy in the process of accretion of matter onto the central supermassive black hole. If the activity of the black hole is too high, the process of star formation will slow down, so the process of forming heavy elements will suffer the same fate. If, on the contrary, the activity of the black hole is too low, then the surroundings will be filled with young and exploding stars, which are also unsuitable for the formation of long-lived heavy elements. It turns out that changing this balance greatly affects the further evolution of stars in the galaxy. The chain of events leading ultimately to the birth of life and humanity would be different or might not even exist without the coevolution of galaxies with supermassive black holes and their precise regulation. Overall, this is a complex and fascinating topic related to the formation supermassive black holes and their precise regulation. The total number of stars in the universe can vary, as can the number of both massive and supermassive stars, as well as the shapes of galaxies. In addition, the distribution of gas, dust, and chemical elements can differ, creating other regions where stars and planets would never have formed. Our fertile corner of space is regulated by all the processes that have ever occurred in its vicinity, as well as by the behavior of the central supermassive black hole. Looking at all of this, it creates the impression that our galaxy is alive. Stars are born and die, with one of the main elements of their formation being water. What do you think? The fate of each star is predetermined by its mass. In about 5 billion years, our sun is destined to expand to approximately the orbit of the Earth and become a red giant, and then lose its outer layers and become a white dwarf. Heavier stars with a mass of more than two solar masses have a different fate. When the nuclear fuel is depleted to a critical level, the pressure outward loses to the force of gravity, and the star begins to contract. Depending on how the star rotates and how massive it is, there are two scenarios for its further life. If the mass does not exceed about three solar masses, then this object becomes a neutron star. And if the star was heavier, it becomes a black hole. The matter seems to fall inward, the density increases more and more, and space-time breaks. This process of loss of matter stability is called gravitational collapse. As a result, a singularity is formed in the center of the black hole, a place where the known laws of physics do not apply. A black hole is separated from ordinary space by an event horizon, the size of which is described by the gravitational radius. The black hole and the event horizon are concepts that reflect the essence of the trap that arises in space. In space, everything that falls beyond the event horizon inside a black hole never returns. The gravitational force inside is so strong that one would need to accelerate faster than the speed of light to escape the black hole, but such speed is impossible in our universe. Therefore, even a photon or an electron, in fact, any known carrier of information, is unable to reach an external observer. Thus, we may never know what happens inside a black hole. It is an area of space where obtaining data from it is prohibited by the laws of physics. However, human curiosity is infinite, so we try to come up with ways to overcome the limitations imposed by theory. In olden times, sailors used a simple rope and weight to measure the depth of the sea. They would throw the rope overboard, and the depth would be determined by how far the rope sank. Similarly, in a scenario where we launch a space towboat around a black hole and drop an instrument beyond the event horizon, we could study the singularity's boiling life. 
Later, we could pull back the rope and examine all the records. This is a good idea, but it is based on several assumptions. For example, the rope must be ultra strong, and we must have an eternity at our disposal because not only space, but time also tears apart in a singularity. Therefore, to an observer on our ship, it would appear that the rope takes an infinite amount of time to reach the event horizon. However, let us assume that we are not too concerned about time. Can we learn something about the events inside a black hole? At first glance, our task may seem a little easier due to the differences in black hole's appetites. The thing is, similar objects can differ enormously in mass. Black holes consume surrounding matter, inhale gas from companion stars, swallow dust clouds, and even devour other black holes, allowing them to grow to unimaginable proportions. Modern science suggests that supermassive black holes are located at the centers of most galaxies. For example, the object called Sagittarius A asterisk with a star at the center of our Milky Way has a black hole mass exceeding 4 million solar masses, which is the theoretical limit for the upper bound of the mass of such giants. However, paradoxically, these supermassive galactic nuclei are less hungry and less dangerous than compact black holes. The gravitational distortion at the event horizon of a small black hole is billions of times stronger than that of the center of our galaxy. Therefore, it may be more advantageous for us to send our ship with a rope into orbit around the galactic center rather than an ordinary black hole, where it may be easier to pull the rope out from under the event horizon. Unfortunately, it seems that the size of the gravitational radius does not play a significant role. If an object becomes a black hole, its size will not affect the principle of one-way passage through the event horizon. Going into a black hole is always a one-way ticket. To understand why, let us consider a borderline situation where the fate of a star is decided by just one neutron. Let us assume that a single neutron determines whether the star will become a neutron star or a black hole. There is an experiment with a glass of water in which an experimenter carefully adds coins to the water until the water arches over the edge but has not yet spilled. Then we add one last coin and the excess water spills onto the table. Now, let us examine what will happen inside such a neutron when its mass becomes the last drop. When the critical mass is added to a star, it becomes a black hole. The neutron consists of quarks, and one of them will be closer to the newly formed singularity, and one will be farther away. The gluon is the mediator of the interaction between quarks, and for the neutron to remain stable, the gluon will have to move from inside the event horizon to the outside towards the quarks, as far away as possible from the singularity. Will the action of being as far away as possible from singularity violate the secret information stored by black holes? Will it be possible for a galleon to extract any information from under the event horizon? Unfortunately, neither for the galleon nor for the photon, the geodesic trajectory lines of the particle moving at the speed of light will only lead to singularity at the center of a black hole. Any movement will be towards the inside, even the fastest messenger in the universe is doomed. What can we say about Troyes and the abandoned collection of our star tug? If the rope is indeed super strong, the entire ship will be pulled under the event horizon, not the other way around. For the sake of fairness, it should be noted that there are many variations of Einstein's theory of gravity in science, some of which question the existence of the event horizon. Then, alternative objects to black holes will have a material surface, and observational data obtained from such stars will differ from what we expect to see within the framework of classical theory. When cosmic objects collide with giants in the cores of galaxies, there will be colossal bursts of radiation that are completely different from the dive behind the black hole event horizon. However, the data obtained at the moment from the Panoramic Survey Telescope System PANSTARS and the Event Horizon Telescope Project confirm the correctness of the generally accepted theory of black holes. Nevertheless, black holes remain the most paradoxical and romantic objects in the universe, prompting the best minds to express new and new guesses about their structure. Unfortunately, there is still no way out of a black hole after crossing the event horizon. Those who watch our videos regularly love to fantasize about different things. 
We've imagined what would happen if water disappeared from Earth, what our planet would be like without the moon, and suspected that there was another planet between Mars and Jupiter. It's time for another fantasy. There is one of the scariest phenomena in the universe, black holes. Their enormous mass warps space and time. Supermassive black holes lurk in the depths of galaxies, swallowing millions and billions of stars like the sun on the edge of the Milky Way galaxy. Our solar system is located in the Milky Way, and according to scientists, there are several million black holes in this galaxy, which are about 30 times heavier than the sun. So, black holes are scary stories simply because they are not nearby. But what if a black hole formed in the solar system? The sun would never turn into a black hole because such a transformation requires mass exceeding the sun's mass by 10 to the power of 15 times. If the sun had such a mass, a gravitational collapse could occur in the future under the force of gravity. Cursing does not help to cast for the role of a black hole in a movie and other stars nearby, many of which are ordinary red dwarfs with a mass of 8 to 60% of our sun, so let's think about how it could be formed. There are two options, but if you know others, write them in the comments. So, the first option is a black hole spontaneously forming in our vicinity, and the second option is one wandering through galaxies coming to us from the depths of space. The first option would be possible if we could create a black hole ourselves artificially, but that is impossible. As for the second option, astronomers and astrophysicists have confirmed the existence of around 2,000 wandering black holes, but the chances of one of them reaching us are close to zero because space is incredibly vast. But, we have our imagination, and therefore anything can happen. It will appear like an ordinary massive object, subject to the laws of gravity, where the attraction between two objects is proportional to their mass and decreases with distance. In other words, there is no gravitational difference between a star with a mass of 265 suns and a black hole with the same weight. However, everything changes as you get closer to the black hole. An object that enters its gravitational field will encounter two different sets of rules, according to Einstein's general theory of relativity, which allows for the existence of black holes and their binding of space and time. It also involves extreme gravity, which pushes this curvature to its limit. As you approach the black hole, the object will cross the event horizon, the boundary from which even light cannot escape. Nothing can stop the movement towards the singularity, the infinitely compressed core of space and time. Here, the physics that we know breaks down. As you move closer to the black hole, time will slow down significantly, and an object moving towards the black hole will not notice anything unusual. However, observers will see something like blurred lines. This will continue until the event horizon, beyond which nothing and no one can be seen since the gravitational distortion of time is too weak to be noticeable. For example, living at sea level on Earth for a billion years would make you one second younger than someone who lived at the top of Mount Everest. However, in a black hole, time spins at an insane speed and is compressed to such an extent that the path to singularity literally becomes the future, and attempts to escape from singularity will be like trying to stop time, like being embraced by the solar system. The black hole is moving at tens and hundreds of kilometers per second, but it absorbs light. Let's start with the fact that matter torn apart by a black hole will emit radiation as the disk rotates and expands, and the space around it will be very bright in the darkness of space. In addition, the black hole will make its presence known when it interacts gravitationally with celestial objects such as planets, stars, asteroids, and comets. The closer the black hole is to our solar system, the more dangerous it becomes. As the orbits of planets and satellites approach, they will dance around it, much like a fly caught in a spider's web. Cataclysms will occur, tides and seasons will change, and the color of the sky will change. If gravity moves a planet's orbit further from the sun, it will become more elliptical, and temperature and seasons will fluctuate. The Earth may fall into the sun or go on a long journey straight into the abyss of space. In this case, all of humanity will meet a cold death. Let's imagine that a black hole comes from behind the solar system and appears in the vicinity of Neptune. Would the Earth feel it immediately? 
A typical black hole with a mass of 10 suns and flying at a speed of 300 kilometers per second would give itself another tenth of a light year in distance. If so, a black hole of this size would give the people of Earth at least 100 years to prepare themselves before total destruction. As the black hole approaches Neptune, it will pull it off its orbit, along with the planet it absorbs. The gas will be twisted into a gravitational spiral, like sugar when making sweet water. The closer the black hole gets to Earth, the more its distortion effect will be manifested, like in a funhouse mirror. All telescopes will only see emptiness at the center of the black hole. If the black hole is supermassive, our imagination will end since its event horizon will be five times larger than the solar system's. In a small black hole, for example, with a mass of 30 suns, tidal forces caused by increased gravity would tear a person apart long before they reach the event horizon. However, gravity there is somewhere around a million times that of Earth, so a person wouldn't have even a tenth of a second to enjoy reaching the event horizon. One million Earth years is what it takes to fully experience the achievement of reaching the horizon of events in the universe. As for a supermassive black hole with a mass of 5 million suns, similar to the one currently at the center of the Milky Way galaxy, things are somewhat different. Any black hole that has absorbed a mass greater than 30,000 suns possesses tidal forces with a gravity less than that of Earth on the horizon of events. Earthlings would have 16 seconds to look around before they reach the singularity point. Therefore, the greater the mass, the more time it takes to fall through the horizon of events, and in an instant, one can see both the beauty and horror inside a black hole. Stars can be seen entering, but not leaving the black hole, and the surrounding space will resemble a soap bubble. After this short flight, one would reach a point of infinite curvature where time and space, as we know them, come to an end. It is currently impossible to know how physics works at this point. Scientists say that it is in the heart of a black hole where human civilization will discover all the secrets of the universe, but is this really the case? Like our channel and subscribe to stay tuned for new releases. Black holes, without exaggeration, are the strangest, most mysterious, and, let's not be deceitful, the most interesting objects in the observable universe. Year after year, scientists discover something new and gradually approach the solution and understanding of the nature of black holes. So, what was new about black holes in 2018? As is known, black holes are formed either as a result of the gravitational collapse of a sufficiently massive star or the compression of galactic gas or the central part of a galaxy. At that moment, a colossal volume of gamma radiation is released into space. The latter, in turn, represents the most luminous and electromagnetic events occurring in the universe and has not yet been fully studied by scientists. In 2018, strange signs were discovered in the captured gamma radiation signals that, according to researchers, could be interpreted as the reversal of time. Usually, with each gamma ray burst event, a wave with a certain signature is emitted, which never repeats itself. However, anomalies were found in the signals that contained patterns that had already been observed, indicating the possibility of time running in reverse. During an emission, a wave with a specific signature is emitted which is never repeated in the detected signals. Anomalies were found in these signals that could not be explained by any theoretical model. These signals represented special wave-like structures that were turned in time, not as if their beginning was at the end of the burst, but at the beginning. Some physicists concluded that this was evidence of time reversal. However, there is another, more realistic explanation. Gamma rays from the emission may have collided with some matter that bent them, creating waves with a signature that scientists mistook for time reversal. It turns out that the rays may have struck a cluster of matter that acted as a reflective surface. There is also the possibility of discovering a completely new law of physics. Collisions with planet Nibiru, asteroids, or anomalies on the Sun have been discussed recently as possible scenarios for the end of the world. In 2018, physicists proposed a new variation on the apocalypse, suggesting that black holes could destroy the Earth. A few years ago, the scientific world celebrated the confirmation of the discovery of gravitational waves, a phenomenon that stretches and compresses the fabric of reality. 
This deadly force could be unleashed by high-energy cosmic cataclysms. For example, if two black holes or two neutron stars merge, the resulting gravitational waves will collide with each other. Scientists often compare gravitational waves to circles on the water when a stone is thrown into it. However, if a particle or object moves at the speed of light, flat gravitational waves can appear. If the waves are large enough, their collision can create a giant black hole that will change space and time on a colossal scale in cosmic space. Now imagine that such an event occurs near Earth. What would happen then? Not only all life, but also the entire solar system would be destroyed. Among black holes, intermediate mass black holes stand out as those with a mass much larger than that of stellar mass black holes. Their mass ranges from 10 to several tens of solar masses, but intermediate mass black holes are significantly smaller than supermassive black holes, whose mass ranges from 1 million to billions of solar masses. For a long time, it was believed that black holes of intermediate mass were much rarer than supermassive and stellar mass black holes. However, a recent discovery in 2018 proved this opinion wrong. Scientists found a place where such objects are most often encountered and found that black holes of intermediate mass are not as rare as previously thought and are quite common in the centers of small galaxies. The reasons for this occurrence are unknown to scientists, but this discovery may help solve another puzzle. Scientists cannot understand how some of the discovered supermassive black holes in relatively compact galaxies grew so rapidly in size since the Big Bang. Now there is a hypothesis that supermassive black holes could have grown from black holes of intermediate mass, or they were born supermassive from the beginning. However, there is no convincing answer yet. Moving on to the object Sagittarius A asterisk, which is a supermassive black hole located at the center of our galaxy. In the early 2000s, astronomers discovered two mysterious objects near Sagittarius A asterisk that were initially thought to be gas and dust clouds and were called G-class objects. The mystery is that both of these objects eventually approached the black hole and the powerful gravity of the supermassive Sagittarius A asterisk should have destroyed them, but somehow they managed to survive. In 2018, three more G-class objects were discovered near Sagittarius A asterisk, and all five objects attract attention with their unusual properties. They have distinctive visual characteristics of gas clouds, but behave like stars with huge masses, possibly of a rare type that is not typical of the Milky Way. Scientists have hypothesized that unique conditions near the supermassive black hole could allow stars and gas clouds to collapse and merge under the influence of powerful gravity, resulting in a single object with a large mass and thick gas and dust envelopes. However, there are many questions about this hypothesis that remain unanswered, such as why not all objects have similar orbits around the black hole. As we know, there are many galactic clusters in the universe that contain hundreds or even thousands of galaxies. These are some of the largest objects in the universe. Can one object hide such a massive structure? Several decades ago, a quasar was discovered that was able to do just that. This object was named Peculiar Object 1353-341. Initially, it was thought to be a separate galaxy with an incredibly bright central region. However, in 2018, astronomers discovered that the object is not a galaxy, but a single quasar. This quasar is located at the center of an entire galactic cluster that is 2.4 billion light years away from Earth. Object 1353-341 is so bright that it simply eclipses all the surrounding space containing hundreds of galaxies. Its brightness is 46 billion times greater than that of the sun. Astronomers believe that its extreme brightness is due to the absorption of a large amount of surrounding material by its central supermassive black hole. However, those who follow news about black holes are probably interested in the question of which black hole is the fastest growing. In 2018, scientists discovered the most voracious black hole in the observable universe. It consumes a mass almost equivalent to that of our sun every day and grows very quickly. If this monster were located at the center of our Milky Way, the X-rays it produces would sterilize the Earth of any life. Fortunately, it is located very far from us. 
when scientists detected the first light from the quasar J2157-3602 associated with this black hole, its age was estimated to be 12 billion years old. When it was confirmed that there was indeed a black hole near the quasar, its mass was already about 20 billion solar masses, and every million years it adds another percent. Why it grows so quickly is unclear, but it is known that such appetites and heating of the surrounding gas and dust create such conditions that its brightness easily eclipses the color of practically all the stars in the sky. In August 2018, the British physicist Roger Penrose made a loud statement that, according to his assertion, before the appearance of our universe, that is, before. At the same time, intermediate mass black holes are significantly smaller than supermassive black holes, ranging from one million to hundreds of millions of solar masses. For a long time, it was believed that black holes of intermediate mass were much rarer than supermassive and stellar mass black holes. However, a recent discovery in 2018 proved this opinion wrong. Scientists found a place where such objects are most often encountered and found that black holes of intermediate mass are not as rare as previously thought and are quite common in the centers of small galaxies. The reasons for this occurrence are unknown to scientists, but this discovery may help solve another puzzle. Scientists cannot understand how some of the discovered supermassive black holes in relatively compact galaxies grew so rapidly in size since the Big Bang. Now there is a hypothesis that supermassive black holes could have grown from black holes of intermediate mass, or they were born supermassive from the beginning. However, there is no convincing answer yet. Moving on to the object Sagittarius A asterisk, which is a supermassive black hole located at the center of our galaxy. In the early 2000s, astronomers discovered two mysterious objects near Sagittarius A asterisk that were initially thought to be gas and dust clouds and were called G-class objects. The mystery is that both of these objects eventually approached the black hole, and the powerful gravity of the supermassive Sagittarius A asterisk should have destroyed them, but somehow they managed to survive. In 2018, three more G-class objects were discovered near Sagittarius A asterisk, and all five objects attract attention with their unusual properties. They have distinctive visual characteristics of gas clouds, but behave like stars with huge masses, possibly of a rare type that is not typical of the Milky Way. Scientists have hypothesized that unique conditions near the supermassive black hole could allow stars and gas clouds to collapse and merge under the influence of powerful gravity, resulting in a single object with a large mass and thick gas and dust envelopes. However, there are many questions about this hypothesis that remain unanswered, such as why not all objects have similar orbits around the black hole. As we know, there are many galactic clusters in the universe, and they contain